Hi, friends. Welcome back to the Business of Story. If you're here for the very first time, then, well, I'm sure glad you made it over. I'm your host, Park Howell, and today we're going to look at how you can dominate your local market, your hometown, if you will, by telling your compelling brand story. But first, our story marketing moment. If you don't own your brand story, and I mean really own it and tell it well, guess what's going to happen? Your competitors, customers, and even the market in general will make one up for you. They'll define your brand story, and chances are it won't be the one you want to tell. You're going to hear about that very problem today that happened to our guest, which actually nearly bankrupted her business until she got her story defined. So where do you start in crafting your brand story? Well, begin with your origin story that explains why you do what you do. Your origin story typically starts at the intersection of where two of your curiosities and passions came together you know, earlier in life. That creative collision is usually the impetus for why you do what you do today. For instance, the two worlds of music and communications collided for me at Washington State University when I studied both journalism and music composition and theory. Now, today, all these decades later, I help brands grow their business by teaching them the composition and theory of story in their sales and marketing. Only, I call it the applied science and bewitchery of storytelling. But if those two worlds had not collided back in the early 1980s, then business of story probably wouldn't be around today. And clients wouldn't be considering me their world's most industrious storyteller, some of them who I've grown as much as 600%. It's all captured in my book, Brand Bewitchery. Here's another example, the one I really love, and you may well have heard this one. It comes from actually Steve Jobs' biography. So this is written right, you know, taken right from the book. And I quote from Steve Jobs. I decided to take a calligraphy class to learn how to do calligraphy. I learned about serif and sans serif typefaces, about varying the space between different letter combinations, about what makes great typography great. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture. And I found it fascinating. None of this had any hope of any practical application in my life. but. 10 years later, when we were designing the first Macintosh computer, it all came back to me and we designed it all into the Mac. It was the first computer with beautiful typography. If I had never dropped in on that single course in college, the Mac would never have multiple typefaces or proportionally spaced fonts. And since Windows just copied the Mac, it's likely that no personal computer would have them either. So you see how that simple little origin story came together with these two, what seems like disparate interests, calligraphy and technology. And today you and I use exactly what came out of that particular brand story. So that's why I want you to get your story dialed in, starting with two scenes in your life that you can knit together that creates, or at least starts to create your origin story. And when you do, own it you will never have to worry about your competitors or your customers defining your story for you because you will be able to captivate them in a very compelling way. Today's guest, Krista Mayshore, combines her love of teaching with her remarkable branding abilities in the crowded real estate industry. She now coaches businesses on how to dominate their local markets. She has a master's degree in curriculum and instruction design and was ranked among the top 10 real estate agents by the Wall Street Journal. Krista was also featured as one of Real Trends' 1,000 elite real estate agents nationwide. Telling your story on video, no matter how painful it is to you, is an essential part of her digital marketing playbook to help you stand out in your local market. I'll never forget Leslie, Leslie Bennett. She She's a real estate agent. And I remember at about month three or four, she's like, oh my God, I just, I can't do this anymore. My, my family is making fun of me. My community, everyone's making fun of me. And because she lives in a really, really small town. I think it's Georgia. And I says, Leslie, you just keep going. 
she had only closed two deals the year before. This year, she will do just under 100 transactions. This is not with a big team. So in a 20-month period, she went from selling two houses a month to selling 88. She was a an experienced agent who wasn't doing any business. Her husband was a developer. And he was making fun of her too. Like, oh my God, these videos are so dumb. Now he's on the video bandwagon. Krista is author of four best-selling books, including the Digital Marketing Playbook and host of the popular Fired Up with Krista Mayshore podcast. She recently took her new business from zero to $7.4 million in sales in just 25 short months, using many of the online digital strategies she'll share with you today, including her eight C's to powerful video storytelling that converts. So please welcome to the Business of Story, Krista Mayshore. Krista, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm super, super excited about it. I really, really appreciate it. Well, I am excited to learn about how you became among what? The the top 1% of realtors in the country and what that taught you that you are now teaching other small businesses on how to stand out in very, very crowded markets. Because quite honestly, Krista, I can't think of a more commoditized industry than real estate. I think I did some research on this. There's like 2 million realtors in America. Yes, and, Mark. <laughs> and I think you were working uh, at the time when you were doing that full time out of California. Well, 10% of realtors are in California. So how did you rise to the top of that? And what did you learn in that process? You know, I just, I, my, my goal is always to be different and I have the serve, not sell mentality. So, um, I, I always tried to do what everybody else was doing. I tried to either do it better or just do it completely opposite of them. You know, I can give you an example of way back in the day. So way back in the day when normal agents were just doing black and white colored flyers, while I was doing four page color brochures, marketing my, my listings on TV and ha- putting the CDs on the TVs with like on the, on my signs with like 50 different pictures. So I just always kind of went above and beyond. And now we do that obviously digitally. Um, but you know, while, while most agents are doing open houses and door knocking and cold calling back when you were allowed to, I was creating video content and putting it on social media and really, you know, interviewing local experts and interviewing, um, different businesses within my community and spotlighting, spotlighting different businesses and kind of just doing things differently. So you grew your business from zero to $7.4 million doing this? I did this in in coaching, yes. So in coaching, it's the exact same strategy that I did coaching, and I did that in 25 months. So we went from not anyone knowing us in the in the in the digital marketing space of teaching people how to do video and digital marketing to going from zero to 7.4 million in 25 months. Yep. So what problem today are we going to help our listeners solve? We're going to help our listeners understand how they can still have a presence when they when their whole business has been shut down, basically. So like it, pretty much, and it doesn't matter whether you're a local professional or you're a brick and mortar or you're, you know, you're selling t-shirts or you're, you know, pretty much any business. We're going to, I'm going to talk to you about how can we still get exposure so we can still operate and do business, especially with COVID and all these restrictions and all that kind of stuff going on. Let's dive in. First, I want to hear a little bit about your backstory. And what I like to pull up is kind of your origin story. Where were two like seemingly unrelated curiosities in your life come together that inform who you are today and how you are successful today? Kind of people look at me as from foster home to fortunes, if that makes sense. So I was actually um, got into some trouble when I was younger. I I had um, a really really great family, but there was obviously some difficulty within the family that, and, and I I sort of expressed the difficulty by running away from home. And so I haven't lived at home since I was thirteen. With that being said, I'm so close to my parents now. We're very very close. We're you know I I see them all the time. We we just had kind of a rough patch, but. I ended up getting in trouble and ended up finding myself in juvenile hall. And then I ended up going to a, a group home for girls um, for about a year and then spent the last three years of my um, high school in a foster home. So I haven't been lived at home for a, for a long time. And um, at one point, I just made the decision as a young youth to, 
you know, I could either, either have gone on the bad path or the good path. And I made the decision to go on the good path. And so I just really, really worked hard on, on my mindset and being the best person that I can be and, you know, reading educational books and just, just being good, you know, and, and I was always good anyways, to be honest, it was just, a, you know, a few bad decisions that I had made, but, uh, yeah, I, I think that's, you know, and my upbringing was very religious, which kind of helped me, you know, be the person that I am and, and, and have this, the core values and all that. And, uh, and then I ended up, you know, um, getting married at, uh, uh, around 25 and I became a school teacher. I taught third grade for six years. I've got a master's degree in curriculum and instruction. So I put myself through school and worked full time to pay for my, for my college. So I would work from, uh, nine 30 to six every day. And then I drive to school from six 30 to 10 at night. I'd go to school uh, at the extension at Hayward state and, um, got my, my degree in my, my bachelor's. Then I ended up getting my master's in education and be, became a teacher. And, uh, that's, that's how it all started. <laughs> Do you remember that moment that you decided it was that crossroads? I could go the, the wrong route, or I could take the road that's really going to work for me. Do you remember that moment? Can you take us there? You know, I don't remember that moment. I, I can't say there was any given time frame. I can tell you that I remember when I graduated from high school and I got a scholarship from Juvenile Hall. And the man said to me, Krista, when you make it big one day, just promise to pay it forward and give it back. And so that has had a huge impact on, because I mean, it was rough. You know, I was, I remember times where I didn't have any food and no money to, to pay for even food. Cause I was, all my money was going to college and my books and all that. And I remember one time I found $20 in a card that somebody had sent me before and somehow I missed it. And it was like, Oh my God, that was, I went to, you know, food max and I bought enough food to last me for two weeks, like as much top ramen as you can imagine. It was tough, you know, it was tough times. Um, but I just remember, like, I knew that when I hit it big one day that I would, I would give back and I'm very much a philanthropist. I've, I do a lot of stuff for the community and I, I do a lot of stuff for the teenagers. I do this thing called teens lifting lives where I have them coach with me and I do it for free and I pay them money to coach with me. And then they give, you know, a quarter, a third of that money back to the community, you know, in like philanthropy on their own. It's called teens lifting lives. And, uh, yeah, I just, you know, I just, I think my, my upbringing had a lot to do with it. I was always just a good kid, but I had made some really bad decisions there for a while and I just got in with the right group of girls and it just, you know, it just worked out. <laughs> Your parents must be very proud of you. They are very close. Yes. That's awesome. You were a school teacher for a while. How did you make the transition then into real estate? Well, my daughter um, uh, was got very sick. She contacted spinal meningitis and had kidney failure and uh, multiple strokes. And so they told me that she probably was going to be severely handicapped, um, mentally disabled. You know, they, the list goes on blind, deaf, you, you know, I should expect all these horrible things to happen to her. Needless to say, she's perfect. She has got ADHD, but I think that's just because she's my daughter. Um, so she's absolutely wonderful. But I left teaching because I wanted to be at home with her and be able to take care of her. And my, my, my thought was, I'll just kind of play real estate. I'll just do real estate part time and sell a couple houses a year and be able to make, because I live in California, what I made as a teacher working full time. And um, very shortly after doing that, I had found out that my husband at the time was having an affair. And so I, I ended up, you know, finding myself in a, you know, we had just bought in a brand new home. I found myself with two two daughters at home, ages two and four and a half, almost five, um, empty drained bank accounts and a brand new mortgage payment. <laughs> so my idea of going into real estate part-time turned into me selling 69 homes my first year. Wow. And did you sell those 69 homes out of almost desperation? Like you had to get a couple in the book in the bank and then it's like, oh, I'm actually pretty good at this. What else can I do to amp this up? It was absolutely out of desperation. Like people always go like, oh, what was your drive? My drive was keeping my kids safe in their home and and sound. And so my, my drive was them. But I remember at Thanksgiving, uh, we had just split up and I was just devastated. And um, I remember the, the new girlfriend picking up my kids driving my car and taking them away at Thanksgiving. And I just remember sitting in the, in the kitchen, just sobbing and just feeling so sorry for myself and drinking my bottle of wine, you know, at 10 in the morning and looking out in the, in the backyard with just all these weeds, because when you buy a new home in California, they don't do the backyard. And after a couple hours, I, I said to myself, you know what, you just gotta, you gotta quit. This is not gonna, this is not helping you sitting here being sorry. You have to just go out there and just crush it. And my goal was, I remember saying, I'm going to, build that backyard, like with the 
most awesome pool and backyard. So it's going to be made of memories and love and, you know, just have the biggest water slide in the world. And that's exactly what I did within, within a year or so. I had a most gorgeous backyard you can ever imagine. And I paid for it all in cash um, from the business, the money that I'd made in real estate. And the girls and I had just many, many years of memories there. When was the first time in real estate you knew you had a specialty? You know, um, I, I love people. I'm, I'm really a people person. Um, and, you know, it's it's difficult. I mean, there's so much competition in real estate. Like like everybody you know, like I've got seriously three best friends, actually one, two, four best friends that are real estate agents, right? So we're everyone, in Scottsdale here. We live here in Scottsdale and you can't throw a cat without hitting a real estate agent. Yes. And, and there's so many Not real that I throw cats, Krista, by the way. I but know. Just, you know. Park, you're so funny. But it's, it's, it is like that. It's like everyone knows a realtor, right? And it's like, so it's really difficult to be competitive. But once you show that you're unique and you have a value add, and I just made sure that I did things that other people weren't willing to do. I advertised the movie theaters and did a video. I hired somebody, you know, to make a commercial of me, which I played at the movie theaters. It wasn't just a picture. It was actually a video, right? I, you know, marketed myself on Comcast. I mean, I spent money to to make money, and I think many professionals and 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 businesses, especially in real estate, they are they don't invest in their education, they don't invest in their marketing, they just do what they've always been taught, and that really, really not only hurts them, but it hurts the client, right? It, especially if you're a listing agent, by doing what everyone else does, you're just killing your clients. So, you know, I wanted to, to be known as somebody who just gave immense value and who really, really um, was different. And so my goal was always, how can I see what somebody else is doing and make it better? And how can I see what other professions are doing? And how can I relate it to real estate? And that's exactly what I did. And how long were you in real estate before you made the transition to, to coaching? So for 17 years. So I started coaching at 17 years. It's been about 20 years now that I've been in real estate. And I remember my my parents, like I was doing just under $2 million, you know, gross revenue um, as a as a real estate agent when I left to, to coach. And my parents were like, normal people don't leave a job where you're making almost $2 million a year and go try to do something different. Chris, like, what is wrong with you? And my, they were like, we, we support you, but no one's going to pay you to coach them. And my husband was like, babe, are you sure? Like, cause I'm, I'm the primary breadwinner. Right. So he's like, are you sure you want to coach? I'll support you. But like, I think he was scared too, you know, and I was scared for God's sake, but you know, I was, I was reading this book, um, from, I'm sure you've heard of it, Napoleon Hill, thinking grow rich. And he, one of, one of the things he says in it is anytime you get you know, like a, this, this, the universe is talking to you all the time and you should listen, but most people don't ever listen. And I had been being told just from so many people, like, you should be a coach. You're so inspiring. And so one day I just did. And, uh, it was a definitely a hard, I know, I know I make it sound so glamorous, zero to 7.4 million in 25 months, but it was hard. And you got to sometimes spend a million and $1 to make a million. I mean, it's, it's really that way, especially when you first, no one ever talks about that. Right. It's true though. It's like, I'm like, how am I not making any profits? Because I keep throwing it all back into the business and we're still doing that. Right. Because we want our students to have such an amazing uh, success. So we constantly just add as much value to them as possible. So they'll, they'll succeed. So, you know, we, we really kind of feel like the profitability is going to really start happening this next year because we've just done so well with what we're doing and our students just see such massive success, but I love it, you know, and, and uh, like, I love people and I love, I love coaching. And I, you know, we just, it's so nice when somebody tells you, man, you have just changed my life. I, I don't hear it just about like, it's one thing to say you've changed my business. Cause we hear that a lot, but when they tell you that you've changed my life, and I mean, they're so sincere, right? And when you hear it so often, like I'm, that's my love language, I guess. Like, that's how I feel my own value is by knowing that I've helped somebody else. And I like hearing it. Then I'm like, oh, I've done good, you know? So um, it's powerful. been an amazing experience. Yeah. How long have you had your coaching? Uh, three years, November. November was three years. So exactly three years. And congratulations. That is fantastic. You. So you went from one of the most commoditized businesses and excelled there in real estate now into probably an even more commoditized business in coaching because you can't, again, throw a cat without hitting a coach within a block of me. And there's probably 10 of them. So what have you done that has really made you stand out? And who are you for? Who who do you coach? So I coach um, local professionals. So that'd be like attorneys, doctors, dentists, real estate agents, mortgage brokers, 
it's actually any type of business, but I really like to focus on local professionals. And that's right? not local just in your area. That's like any small. Oh yeah. Anywhere. So anybody yeah. that's, that's a, a local professional, I, I like to help professionals, um, across the country. So I always say local professional. So any type of professional, right? At multi-level marketers, um, we teach them how to utilize video and social media to be what I call the community market leader, which is somebody who um, stands out in the community based upon adding value and, and, and serving. We teach them to do this using video. So basically in real estate and in coaching, it, the strategy that I used um, was to, so let me, let me just backtrack a little bit. Okay. When I was in real estate, I was fortunate enough from hard work to be able to land what you call REO and and accounts, right? So I had like 13 different asset management REO accounts, bank foreclosure. So I was helping Wells Fargo, Wachovia, World Savings, uh, Green River Capital, HUD. I was selling their foreclosures. And so my- Selling for coming out of the world, uh, the global recession? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So basically everyone was losing their, 2008, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, right? Everyone was losing their houses. I was working for the banks to sell those houses. And so, Mm -hmm. you know, my best year, I sold 169 homes. That was just myself and a transaction coordinator and assistant, right? So people will talk about selling that kind of home, those that many homes that usually they've got like a person, a 10 team. That was just me, right? I was the only licensed realtor and it was crazy. Well, all of a sudden the market got better, which was great for the economy. I'm so thankful it happened, but my business completely dried up. So I went from selling like 169 homes to selling like 12 because all the foreclosures went away. And so I remember losing a, a deal and I called and said, hey, just checking in, you know, or, um, wanted to see if you were planning on hiring me or what I could do to you know, answer any more questions. And they said, Krista, we really liked you. But the last guy called you the foreclosure queen. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I am the foreclosure queen. And I realized I had to rebrand. I had to rebrand everything, Park. Like I had to rebrand my image, who I was going after, you know, um, like all of it, because before that, when you are selling foreclosures and you work for a bank, all of a sudden you'll just come in and they'll give you like, here's five new listings from Wachovia. Here's three from HUD. Here's, you'll just, they just come to you. No interviews, no nothing. Once you get the account and you maintain your good, you know, rating, they just keep giving them to you. Right. And so a great, a great lesson in that, by the way, is if you don't control your story, as you recognized, it gets told on your behalf. So you were out there you know, selling 169 homes and you were killing it, probably not even thinking about your brand at that point. Just like, mm-hmm. let's do the work. Let's bring in the, the the revenue and so forth. And then when the whole market shifted, all of a sudden you were tabbed as the foreclosure queen. So you that's totally pretty interesting. Got it. it was crazy. And, and, and so now I'm known as the digital marketing queen, right? So I realized I have to reinvent myself completely. And I decided to do that with video. So I started creating video content, um, and putting the videos out there. And then when I learned how to do it properly. So now we we do and we teach people how to put a video out there. And it's almost in, impossible to get organic reach, right? So we teach you how to utilize Facebook and target people specifically in your community, how to retarget them, how to put the right content in front of them at the right time, right? Um, which is so, so important. That's a whole other topic. But we teach them how to do this so they can get, you know, literally hundreds of thousands of, of views, how to get hundreds of hours of watch time on every single video, how to get, you know, thousands, literally thousands of engagements where people are liking, commenting and sharing. We teach them how to do this. And so now they're getting this massive exposure. So I started doing that many, many years ago before anybody was even really using Facebook, right? Or using video. And I was doing that to, and so with that being said, what, what, what that meant was I was able to quickly rebrand myself and be seen as a marketing genius, right? So now I would take all my my homes and I'd market them this way using video and I'd be in the video. So then I'm branding myself at the same time where I'm exposing the properties. And anyone that thinks real estate, they, they think about me in my county. Like you cannot not think about me when you're thinking about real estate because I'm just everywhere. Okay, so just just so I can be clear on this, you went from the foreclosure queen to the digital marketing queen in real estate. This one you was when you were still in, in the real estate real world. Estate. Okay, yep, got, real gotcha. Estate. All in real estate. How and long did it take you to make that switch where people started seeing you differently? Less than a year. Less than a year. Mm-hmm. So within a year, I was back up over selling 100 homes because I wrote a book called Sell 100 Homes a Year because I was, I've averaged over 100 homes every year since I've been in the business. Um, my like worst year was the one year when I lo- you know, lost all the, the foreclosures went away and I had sold 12 homes. My best year was 169, but usually always over 100 every year. And it, it, it quick because 
when you expose yourself on a on a mass level over and over and over again and your community, that's why I call it, I help local professionals because I teach them how to locally like mass dominate, right? Um, it's much easier to really, really dominate somewhere when you're doing it locally because you're just getting so much more reach and exposure. Like for me, I'm doing this nationally now as a coach, right? So like when I spend $1,000 on a Facebook ad nationally, like think about how much harder it is for people to really remember me. But if I spend a hundred dollars locally, I mean, you just get to be seen like over and over and over and over again. So no matter what profession you're in, when you do this and you're you're exposing yourself on a digital level where people are going, right? And they're seeing you, they're developing a relationship with you, they're getting to know you, they're getting to like you, they're getting to trust you, they're seeing you as the authority in that profession. Like if I was to ask you, Park, right now, is where do you live? I'm in Phoenix. Okay, you're in Phoenix. Okay. Oh, this is awesome. So can you think of any one real estate agent that absolutely just stands out in your mind in Phoenix? Yes, only because I see his mug on all the billboards, uh, the, the 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 transit shelters as I drive in and out of my office. Okay, so, you, so yeah. you see him. So it's just one. All right. So mm-hmm. imagine if you were to see him like when you when you when you want to go out to a nice restaurant and you're in a different city, where do you go to find a nice restaurant? Where do you go to research it? Well, I'd Yelp. Okay. Yelp, you go online. Yep, go right? online. Yep. Yelp, Google, whatever it might, it might be. When people are making decisions, whether they're wanting to get divorced or they need an, an accountant or they need an attorney or they need a real estate agent or they need a mortgage advisor or they need to go buy a pizza, they are going online. So you have to understand that you want to show up where people are looking where when they're looking, but also you want to show up indirectly. So where do people go? They go on social media sites. So when people are seeing your face over and over again on social media, they're starting to develop a relationship with you. They're seeing you as the expert authority in your field, right? And it's so, that proximity bias. Yes. Isn't it? You know, they just, they keep seeing you over and over and over again. And all of a sudden there's trust built up in that recognition. Absolutely. And there's something called the parasocial relationship where research shows that when you see somebody often enough, like on video on the other side of a screen, your brain starts to think of them as somebody of importance, right? And you start developing a one-sided relationship with them. You think you know them. So I cannot tell you how many times, I mean, I I told my husband, I can never have an affair because the whole world knows me, right? Like I'll be at the store and someone's like, hey, Krista, how's the market going? Oh my gosh. Do you see that house that just sold over there on Pier? point. And I'm like, yeah, you know, they act like they know me because they've seen me. So now when I go into a listing appointment and I'm competing with five other people, I mean, I never lose because they've already made their mind up to hire me because they already, they've already, they wouldn't have called me to begin with. Right. And then when I can show them how unique my marketing is and how different I am and give them my unique value proposition, it's like a no brainer that that is the power behind this. So what do people need to do? What are two or three things that a listener could do right now to take advantage of your knowledge and start applying it to their own digital marketing? Okay, so no matter what profession you're in, all right, think about what you do at night. What At night or when you're, everyone's heads are always down. We're on our phone. Right now, more than ever with COVID and everything that's happening in the world, everything's shut down. You want to still show up where people are. They're online now more than ever. So start creating video content. Don't I know it's easy for me to say, but I, believe it or not, I don't like video either. No one does. If you if you like if you wake up and you think you that you know you're gonna just all, automatically enjoy doing video, well you're wrong. No one does. Only the weird people like to do video. Okay, people <laughs> do not like it. But anything can be learned. So start creating video content. Don't ever talk about how great you are and how wonderful you are. Think about what are the main, like what are the five most common problems your customer, your client avatar has? Identify what the five major problems are and start creating video content regarding solving the problem, answering the questions, adding value, right? How can you add value? How can you make your customer's life better? Start creating content about that. Start creating content about what happens before you, you, their customer, during them being a customer, after them being a customer. Think about the most common questions you get. Start creating content on it. I mean, the more that you create content, the more you're going to be be seen as the expert. Now, once you've done that, now you want to learn how to properly distribute it. I use Facebook. I use the Facebook ads manager account. Why this is so important. It's not just, don't just boost or don't just use the boosting feature on Facebook. You actually want to utilize your ads manager account because then you can start 
targeting specific people, you then can can see what somebody watches. And then if, if you can tell that somebody watched the entire video that's two minutes long, you know they're pretty interested in your topic, right? Then you can say, hey, this person was cold. They're interested in this. Now I'm going to bring them down my funnel. I'm going to give them more information that they were originally interested in, right? And now you keep sending specific targeted information to the specific targeted people so that they're more likely to convert. And I always say, you know, top of funnel is when you're reaching everybody. Middle of funnel is when you're, is when you're, they're, you're, you know, developing a relationship with you. They're getting to know you and to like you. And then bottom of funnel is they're converting and they're trusting you, right? So, um, you know, you're, you'll be amazed at when you start targeting people, what happens. And, you know, you could create a video. Here's an example. So one of my students just uh, text and she put on our, um, she put on the Facebook page and she was like, Hey, I had, you know, uh, you know, 1,799 people watch my entire video. I mean, imagine almost 1,800 people watching your entire video, right? And imagine doing that every single week and creating multiple videos and, and keeping on getting the content out there. What can happen in a very, very quick time? That's how I was able to do, do coaching. Same thing. I, I started creating content information, value. I wrote a book. I got the book out there and people read the book where I gave them all my secrets and they realized I was the expert. And then they're like, well, I need help with that. Right. It's the same exact philosophy. So say I'm a local attorney and mm -hmm. I hire you for a service. Do you have a case story you can share with us? An example have you seen, and maybe it's not an attorney, but a local professional that has followed your approach and was successful doing it. What'd they do? Uh, you mean as far as their business? Yeah. Yeah. We've, oh my gosh. So if you go Even to Kristen, the person themselves, I mean, do they come in and push back on you? Like, Oh, Krista, yeah, I can do all this stuff, but screw that video thing. I'm not doing that. And then got them over the hump and, and what it meant for their business. So I'll never forget Leslie, Leslie Bennett. She, she's a real estate agent. And I remember at about month three or four, she's like, Oh my God, I just, I can't do this anymore. And my, my family is making fun of me. My community, is, everyone's making fun of me. And because she lives in a really, really small town, I think it's Georgia. And she's like, I'm just so, I, I can't do it. And I says, Leslie, you just keep going. When Leslie came to me, she came to me in April of 2018. And she had only closed two deals the year before. From April until the Jan uh, December, she closed 26 transactions. This year, she will do just under 100 transactions. This is not with a big team. So in a 20-month period, she went from selling two houses a month to selling 88 in a 20-month wow. period. Yes, it's significant. Um, and this year, I, I would, I'm not surprised if she does over 100 deals. Now she's opened up her own her own company. She now has assistants. I mean, this is, she was a, an experienced agent who wasn't doing any business. Her husband was, a was a, was a, uh, was a developer and he was making fun of her too. Like, Oh my God, these videos are so dumb. Now he's on the video bandwagon and he, you know, so, and I'm not thought, sad though. I mean, you know, someone sad. putting themselves out there and then yeah. other people like poking fun at them. What she said to me was she goes, well, Krista. And so then I remember like, like 60 days goes by and she's like, Oh my God. And ever she sends this post, like, I have 10 listings coming up. And she's like, now everyone's like, what? Not like, why are you doing that? But like, what are you doing? How do I do that? Like they're, they're wanting to learn. And if you, if you just go to, if you go to kristamayshore.com slash wins, that's kristamayshore.com slash wins. You'll just see hundreds of testimonials of people that this has worked for. And don't let it, um, you know, don't think, oh, that's just because it's real estate. It does not matter w what industry it's in. It, it, it'll help you. We've, we just helped somebody. I just got a box from one of my students and he's like, they do, um, like bug, not bug, but you know, a cleaning for um, coronavirus, like antiseptic and stuff. And he's like, we're picking up new clients because we're doing these funny videos on like, you know, on, uh, on cleaning and stuff. So it works for, for anybody. Uh, we helped a girl that tells, sells t-shirts. Like she was selling like $18,000 worth of t-shirts from, from this. I mean, it works for anybody, but you have to be willing to do it. You have to be. So I always call it the eight C's. You've got to commit to consistently producing content correctly right? So you can make a connection so you can convert more clients and customers. Here's the thing. The connection part is huge, right? You're going to convert more because you're making a connection. But if you don't do it consistently, it won't make a difference. And if you don't do it correctly, correctly, meaning you can create content, but if no one's seeing it, it doesn't make a difference. So what we teach people how to do is how to make it sure it gets seen. Because how do you, you know, in order for you to be known, you've got to be seen and you've got to be heard. 
whether you're creating videos or not, if no one sees them, it doesn't make a difference. So that's why I, I say I help people locally on a professional level, help them locally dominate their space because we help to make sure that all the videos they're creating are actually seen. We also teach them how to like what hooks to do and how to say it and, you know, how do you give the right content at the right phase of the funnel and how do you retarget? You know, we, we teach them all of it. And um, it's, it's just very, very powerful. And it's very, very fun. And, you, and, get, and honestly, you work less. Like you don't have to work as hard. You know, right now, you know, people that are like local professionals, they usually go to BNI networking groups or they go to they go to golf. Or you you can't do a lot of those things right now, right? But you can produce content on a consistent basis and properly distribute it so it actually gets seen by the masses, and you will realize just how quickly this can change your business. So, given that this podcast is called the business of story, last question: How do you bring storytelling into their world, or do you do any coaching or teaching on that part of it for their content? Oh, all you know, stories, stories. What is it? Stories sell, facts, facts don't. <laughs> what is it like? Stories sell. What was that? What's that quote? Stories sell, facts, facts don't. Like when you go to bed at night, they don't tell you a bedtime fact. Fact, like bedtime facts stories. tell. Right? Facts tell. Yes. Stories sell. Facts but, tell. But you know what? I. Our kids are all ra- you know, born and gone now, raised and, and, and gone now. Had I known what I know about story now, I would have never told them a bedtime story. I would have showed them a PowerPoint presentation if I really wanted to put them to sleep. <laughs> That's so true. That's, that is so, so true. So how oh, do you story like- in your world? Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything's a story, right? Like um, you're, they're developing a relationship with you all the time. And so th- then you're creating this content and then you're bringing them into your world. And you're letting them see your world. They're letting them see what you're actually cooking for dinner that night. And and you're putting a personal touch to it. And, you know, you're some of the best um, posts that I've done are been ones where like I've talked about a personal problem that I've had or an issue that I've overcome or something that I was going through and, or a personal confession, right? I mean, people love real and and vulnerable and raw and and so many people aren't and they're afraid to do it but but you know like you asked me my story right you asked mm-hmm. me about my background and that is so smart because that helped me develop a relationship with the community and it, i can't tell you how many times people will tell me oh my gosh i read in your book about the affair and i've been there and I'm, i it just crushed me and i can't believe that and I, it totally resonated with me it's all about that like when i tell stories and when all of our content and our in our posts and our emails revolve around a story, our open click through rates just go skyrocket. What was the one story that you told that you had second thoughts about pushing it out there? Like it was you were being way too vulnerable, way too open, and then it just killed it. Do you have one like that? Um, well, this is now you I, I don't talk about this much, but um I, I had actually told my my students that I had struggled with an eating disorder. And when I did that, it, I mean, first of all, I didn't even plan on doing it, right? It wasn't like I, I was going to do it. It just came out because it was just timing. And, um, it, it just hit so many people on so many different levels, you know, or they were just like, wow, you're, you're normal. You have, you're normal. I'm like, yes, I've always told you guys I'm normal too. I've got problems and issues just like you. I just, I'm good at inspiring people. I'm good at marketing. Right. But I'm normal. Uh, that and then also the divorce story. I think people um, really that resonated with a lot of men and women, right? Because it was just you know the way that I talked about the story in my book, it really hit home. I think to a lot of people, and I was pretty vulnerable and raw about it and open with it. So, um, but again, it wasn't it wasn't meant to. And then one time, I, I remember I was I was at a conference and I was doing a Facebook live and I grabbed my underwear that were sitting there and I used it to put my hair up in a ponytail. And people were like, "Did you just use your underwear to put your hair up?" I'm like, "Yeah, who cares?" You know, <laughs> they were just like, "Love that too." So you want to just be real, right? Like, don't you know? People are afraid of doing video because they don't want to. They're afraid of how they look or they're going to sound or people are going to judge them. Who cares? That's how we look and we sound. And you're not, you know, you're going to attract the right person. You're going to detract the wrong one. So what happens is, is that you like the people you work with more because they're usually people are attracted to people they like, right? So, um, you know, I know it can be difficult, but if you don't like money, then don't do it. But if you like money and you like to help people and you want to make an impact, then this is something that is absolutely essential in your business, creating content and properly distributing it. That's awesome. If you don't like money, then don't do anything that I just said right there. Yeah. <laughs> Krista, this has been great. Where can people learn more about you and find your your great work? Yes, you can go to getchristasbook.com. That's with a get K, getchristasbook.com. I wrote a book called The Ultimate Lead Gen Playbook where you can get um, a digital copy of that. And um, yeah, I really appreciate being on here, Park. I can't wait to have you on my podcast, Fired Up with Krista Mayshore. He'll be on, Park will be on mine. So be sure to head over there and, and watch that. I'll, I'll make sure I get you all the assets because you're going to be awesome. I, storytelling is going to be a great topic to talk about, and I'm very excited about it. 
I, I was on your show earlier today and checking it out, and it's interesting some of the things you do. Sometimes these episodes are only three or four minutes long. Other times they're 30 minutes long. So you must be just popping on with a very timely topic. Yeah, or my the- team just kind of breaks breaks content up. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah I, I've always run pretty much of an hour-long show. I'm dialing it back a little bit for production and so forth. And I like that. I was thinking maybe I'll have to uh, take a page out of Krista's playbook and maybe do some short little shows here, too, with just some really hard-hitting story ideas for yeah, people. Yeah, that's a really good idea because people are busy. Sometimes what we notice is people will see a podcast if it's too long. Like, I would never do a 60-minute. I would try to do like break it up into three 20 sec 20 minute segments or two 30 minute segments because sometimes people will see a number and they'll be like oh my god that's too long just make yep. sure when you put them out you do part one and part two together right meaning at least you don't wait a day or a week or put, put part two you just do them together so they can watch it again if they want to ah uh, so you post them at the same time but you yes. just give them a, a part one and part two good to know another yes. little fact i'll take away krista thank you so much for being here this has just been an absolute pleasure Park, you too. I just, I love your um, your whole era. You get the best vibes. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I mean that too. You can tell you're good people. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to this edition with Krista. If you like what you heard, by all means, share it with your peeps out there. She gave a lot of great advice. And oh, by the way, she has a little bit of energy behind what she has to sell too. So that was fantastic. If I can help you, Come on over to businessofstory.com. We have been doing our Build a Better Brand Story Sprint. We are in the middle of sprint number three right now. It has been going absolutely fantastic. I've been kind of learning from my students as I go. So I've been molding it, modeling it for what they really want to do. I've launched now uh, the first one in 2021 starting January, what is it? January 12th, Tuesday at 11 a.m. Mountain Standard Time three weeks, six live sessions with me. You get a copy of Brand Bewitchery plus access to my online course. And I promise to help you not only clarify your brand story in those three weeks, but teach you how to tell it. So you can actually mesmerize and captivate your customers. And then, oh, by the way, you can use the tactics that Krista has shared here to tell your story online using video. So you can check that out at businessofstory.com or shoot me an email if you're interested, park at businessofstory.com. Please join me next Monday when I'll have another amazing story artist right here for you like Krista. And until then, remember that the most potent story you'll ever tell is a story you tell yourself. So make it a great one. Thanks for listening.